With all the cool gray days of spring, you may not be thinking about pollinators, but once the temperatures start to get around 55 degrees pretty consistently, butterflies such as commas and morning cloaks and bees like uh, mason bees and bumblebees, they start flying. So you're going to want to have a few things that they can feed on. Now the butterflies, they'll often feed on tree sap and maybe rotting fruit left over from the previous season. But the bees, they are going to really need some flowers from your garden to keep going. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to live where hummingbirds stay all year, the hummingbirds will benefit from these flowers too. So the first one I want to talk to you about is crocus. A lot of people grow cro crocus. It's a sweet little flower that gets about three to six inches tall. The flowers are purple, white, and yellow. They're very cute. They come up in March in my zone five garden. Uh, they're little bulbs. They're going to plant them in fall. And usually a good rule of thumb is plant them three times the depth, the height of the bulb. So usually for crocus, that's about two to three inches deep. And then because they're such small little bulbs, you'll want like groups of five or 10. That'll make them easier to see. They'll pop in the border better. Now I've heard mixed results. They will naturalize and I've heard mixed results about putting them in the lawn. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Although I did find one in my lawn this year, so we'll just see how that goes. The, the second one I want to tell you about is reticulated iris. It's another little bulb that's really cute, but it looks entirely different from crocus. Similar color palette, purple, white, yellow, and about three to six inches tall. The neat thing about these, these bulbs is the flowers have a little pattern on the outer petal. It's called a signal. And that signal is usually like a blotch of white or yellow and white. And that signals to the bee, this is the way to go to get the nectar. Okay, the third plant I want to tell you about is service berry. It's a beautiful tree covered in white flowers in early spring. It's sort of like a one-stop shop for bees when they're hungry. There's lots of the, uh, flowers for them to choose from. And the cool thing is once those flowers are, are pollinated, they're going to turn into these great berries that if you like to make jam or jelly, you can use. And But that would be only if you can um, beat the birds to them because the birds really like them too. There are lots of species and hybrids to choose from. Some bloom a little earlier, some bloom a little later, but usually it's that March to May uh, time frame. They grow 15 to 20 feet, 25 feet tall in zones four to nine. And Autumn Brilliance is a really neat variety that has beautiful fall color. Okay, number four is Pask Flower. This pretty little wildflower, it looks really fuzzy coming up and the flowers come up first. And then there's a little purple or sometimes occasionally white flower with a yellow center. They grow, they can, they reach up to 12 inches tall because the flowers start out low and then they stretch as they grow. They're hardy in zones three to seven. And once the flowers pass, they make these silky little seed heads that look kind of like a clematis seed head. So you get a couple seasons of interest there. The last one I want to tell you about is spotted geranium. It's a native species. You've probably heard about uh, Roseanne and, and Johnson's Blue. You see those in perennial borders a lot, but this native species blooms earlier than those. It's got pretty um, purple pink flowers and it grows 18 to 24 inches tall in zones three to eight. You might find a couple of varieties also, um, Espresso or Elizabeth Ann. They both have a dark purple chocolatey brown kind of foliage. Now, like any geranium, if it gets a little leggy towards uh, the end of its growing season, just trim it back and you'll get new growth and maybe even a light rebloom. Those are some easy to grow early blooming pollinator flowers that you can uh, find just about anywhere. And if you put a few of those in your garden, you'll, you'll keep the bees and maybe a few of the butterflies and hummingbirds happy.